starting to see G3 uh, putting his name on the board, getting EU on the board in these uh, cross regional stuff, which is more important. Gonna have to run really, it back I believe through the it losers. Wasn't an official Arcadian was a Yogurt Cup. I might be wrong with that. But regardless, we're seeing a tiny switch up now. Douchtais recently has been stuck, sticking to the Ezzy. And the way he beat Piker the one time and upsetting on grand finals, winning two sets there, was with the Ezzy. But now we're seeing the. For me, a new pick, the Erda for Douchtais. It's, it's been a while since I've seen that work. I'm oh. thinking that we're gonna be seeing a lot of the Frog Splash. Uh... And not the heaviest character, so maybe just trying to capitalize on this in as few instances as possible. Ezzy obviously going to take a couple more interactions in order to make this work. We've already got one totem down, but no rush. Yeah, this and matchup is definitely in favor for the order. Hence, Tudor had a good showing his first performance with his order against Liscano. Regardless of the massive skill differential. Oh, oh, what a spike there. The Cheap people's elbow is so out. strong. The fact <laughs> that you can charge it and just hug the wall. Obviously down there, everyone knows it for Erda, but that spike hitbox on the tip of the elbow there for it. It's honestly such just such a useful tool. You can pretty much just rush. And we see it right there on Q. Just rush straight in with the elbow. If you get that sour spot hitbox, you're going to push off to the side and it can convert into more of itself. Dude's just quite happy to play slow. You can see where the uh, the Ezzy gameplay, the willingness to slow down the neutral whilst you have a lead comes in. Erda usually forced to like aggress Ooh. and push the issue. But I can't believe that converted. Just the Skano picking up and a three piece to finish off the stock right there and keeping it even. But you definitely, Douchlice has been able to play more patiently as well as with the Erda. Kind of surprised by that. So many Erdas just hyper hopping all the time. But right now, especially against the Skano with all the totem swaps, you gotta respect it. He might be everywhere on the stage and Douch just playing the way he needs to to take the win. Even if it means it play a bit more patient. You can see he's so methodical oh. that, he, man, rent free. I want to know what the uh, real estate looks like <laughs> in Liscano's head because Douchel is definitely coming through with uh, the property value skyrocketing. He's kind of one step ahead, just seeing the switch and just keeps him charging on the totem. Oh, the spike on the stage that could lead to him a lot, but on the platform it was difficult to convert, and now. With a reversal here, a lot of mileage taken right back and the totem just back and forth at every place at the same time. But what if you put a massive forward air into both of them, the totem and the player? It's gonna just hit both of them. Yeah, Dishless's play style, it's so much slower, so much more like methodical is probably the way I would use. Just it feels like he really picks and chooses his uh his options. He comes in with big damage right now. Obviously, he's quite happy to just swing for the fences and trade out. Maybe oh. he gets it again, but this time the totem is going to come through. The dude's just getting quite... bamboozled for once. It seems like he was all ahead and just ready to react to the totem switches and being one step ahead. But this one opening, just evening out the stocks again, but holding on to his HP, trying to not lose it and not to overcommit. But speaking of which, jumping in and takes a quick 30. Uh, I would love to in the oral. This is going to be critical, but oh. nothing. No real big punish there off it. Not much he could do, unfortunately. There. It must have uh, been a miss input throwing him back on stage. There was no reason to do so. Oh, oh the overcommitment by Lisano and now one stock down. That was a very crucial, just basically throw of that stock. Overcommitting against Erda off stage, very dangerous. Yeah, we used to see um, Milo get uh, massive usage of people just challenging him off stage, but now. There we go, we're deciding to see Dish just up the tempo again. I guess it is because it is the tail end of his stock. It's going to push it down to 81 for the Skarno. Basically two or three big hits here. But forces the burst out early. Actually now going to have that resource unlike Dushless. So we've seen that yet again over and over. Liscano always throwing the totem through the stage consistently. This is not a bug for what it seems, but an intended thing that Liscano labbed out to make happen to get back safely. And now with a critical here. Already in the lead, Liscano having the burst on deck still, being on green versus the orange, the next opening might be all he needs. You can immediately see, he's just quite happy to let Liscano switch over there to Galu and oh. instead just uh, get ready to bully the totem. <laughs> Tries to go for the parry there, but this time Rising Frog Splash catches the strong fair, not going to get the burst out. But this time, threatens with down air, gonna get punished, he's down to one, not the soul point though, that one HP could oh, be massive, but now he's down to that last hit, gonna have to play it out, but the end lag 
Gonna get caught. At least I'm gonna take our first game here on Cryo Station. I'm surprised he was able to punish that side B. You need to be quick on that. From what I heard, some people say the, the end leg of that side B is only three frames, but calling out that it's gonna happen, just predicting it, jumping in, covering it, and taking it on the sole percent here. <laughs> Top player Elixir on comms. Oh yeah, we got Elixir back to the community right now to do some official casting here, which is really cool to see. If, if you think back right now for the last stock there, I don't know if you've noticed, but Douchlice was a bit impatient, going with a V-Kit Nail and Shield to get opened up and brought down to red. Just seen it on the replay here. Take a quick peek to see if uh, I can reset my audio. Uh, are we all good? So the players right now are still picking stages and characters. And it seems like we're going right back to Cryo Station. No character swaps as well. Will it be confirmed? Yes, sir. So this is what they decided to go with and stay with. So let's see how this turns out. Douchless is opting for Cryo Station. Personally, this stage, I I have sour feelings with this. This is the stage I affiliate with Ashani. Ashani with up tilt through the platforms, really strong low platforms, lots of platforms as well. But as Erda, I also heard this might be good because if you spike with the Lariat, the downer, whatever it is, even with the dunk on the platform, it limits the options on the roll. Which makes it just oh so easy for someone like Erda with the big hitboxes and grab boxes to just connect. I like the use of the rush there that we saw, making use of uh, that that forward tilt and then immediately rushing up the platform just to get as much momentum in to try and chase down. That was super clean. Oh, just a clip with a single hit of the back and conditioning to just strike right back and get punished for the big strike wave with the forward tilt. I was just looking like such a different kind of beast on that Erda. So many just down airs, and this time gets the opening. I heard it just recently, Prometheus said the down air forward air is one of Douchlet's classics, and now the three piece up tilt off the top with a stock lead. But down to red as we speak. This could be one opening away. But again, oh, never mind. Douchlet is trying to storm through the platform, but the conditioning with the totem just not in time. Definitely the switch and. Focus switch to the totem as well as the other one will be tough to time things properly while avoiding both of those characters hitting you. Definitely feels like Liscano has the momentum right now. He has managed to take the lead with them both on that type third stock, even though he did lose his first. He just hasn't really been able to find an opening as yet. Tries to go for the frog splash, but he's going to get caught and then they're going to oh, connect. The so many good conversions. Liscano keeps closing out the stocks on this crucial uh, hits on the lower HP bands. All right, gets a trade there. We are going to lose the totem. That forward air, because of the totem, was 35% in mileage there. Another big trade. Every trade should be least kind of favored, being in the lead and all. That movement just crossing up. Duchel is trying to catch it with a forward air. Big use of that rising pillar. Tries to get the Nair on the way down, but Dushla's going to be able to avoid it. But not going to be able to avoid much more damage. He's down to Red Band. He's going to finish off the Skana, but now has to work with 150 points on just 13. I do like that he has been going for those frog splashes out of the side special. Trying to catch Liscano jumping over it, but Liscano made making sure he drifts back to not get caught by the secondary hitbox. We're going to see the burst taken out now, oh, and a no. huge re, please. Okay, this could have been it, but he's kind of trying to go all the way up, still being in blue, not quite enough to kill. And then on Soul Percent though, now a full stock lead, blue to blue, and the switch getting called out again with a downer. Douchless is playing so patient on the platform, and oh, on critical as well, doesn't burst up there, very scary situation, but still holds on to the burst, knowing that all the resources count just 
so much more now being on the last stock. Yeah, it was really good from Doucheless. I think just the decision to not burst and accept if he gets hit, he loses the game. But if he spends the burst that early, he effectively also gives up his chance to get back. The down air not going to send off stage, instead going to bounce. Now going to wait under the platform. I like that he's using that to try and keep himself safe from like the rain of Totem. You've seen so much patient play by Doucheless, but Liscano playing just oh so amazingly consistent around it. Just avoiding the grab over and over, just again, the safe shield punish, and Doucheless again dropping the grab. So many grab attempts, just forcing his own burst now, and the opening taking this stock. Just the impatience and the clean pressure by Liscano, one step ahead, and 2-0 in the lead now. So much mileage, and stays with two stocks. So we're going to be having uh, Dushas now have to run it back three games in a row if he is able to make it happen. All of them going to be on oh. Scano's uh, counter pick if he can bring it. I just see something in chat right now. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it. Did it happen? Is it happening? Abud, please, please, don't be lying to me. <gasps> it happened again. That's crazy. Kudo beat Ariodi on the official tournament. Not just on Trash Tier Thursday. It happened just a couple days ago, but Tudo. Tudo won again against Ariodi in losers. Ariodi out last. I, I need I need confirmation. This, I, I think Ariodi also didn't confirm the res Is it confirmed? Oh okay, okay. I I I I'm out of words. I'm a loss of words. Arodi definitely not expecting to lose again, and Tudor just stepping up his game. Tudor looking mighty strong now and made it to quarters, loses quarters, so we're able to see Tudor just in a bit. But we're also going to see Prom as well, uh, down 3 1, Diddy, able to move on forward. So, two competitors, two uh, old faces for me, going to be dropping out of the bracket early. Still going to be able to pick up a little chunk of cash for making it this far finale. Obviously, everyone that's made it to this top eight has done an excellent job throughout the entirety of oh, uh, sure. as well uh, as of the even season. if you outlast, you're getting a decent chunk of change. You get sixty nine dollars ninety seven cents, so that's a good change. This would be worth more than second place, I believe, throughout the season. So today, the stakes are higher, and Tudor very happy to making it further. But as I'm speaking, we do have the character swap from Dodgeless. We're seeing the Ezzy now on the screen, as well as Forbidden Shrine. So Forbidden Shrine, personally, I believe it was a good stage for Ezzy until I saw Ezzy's plant. Just every time someone got hit into the plant, they got put into a attack situation on the platform and avoided the bite for the demon plant. So it seems to me like this might be a bad stage for Ezzy. But let's see what Douchless can do. Yeah, this one was his last uh, stage pick, so he must have felt something it could work to him, but immediately down to 64. Hasn't really been able to get anything done except a couple of chip hits. I'm not very familiar with this matchup. This is the matchup I got introduced to the game on day one when I was actually just my, making my come up with the scene. And I really still don't know really what's going on. There's just so much action, so many projectiles, resources and reversals happening. As well as the float, the spacing. Just now the leaf being just pixels away from the totem to cancel it and getting the opening. But it seems like Viscano is in the lead and the consistency of Viscano is paying off. But Douchless with a more patient play. I want to see if he can make it more count more with the Ezzy than the Erda. Oh. There's the up there, gonna confirm. So it looks really rough, just really rough for that entire first start. I felt like Dishless was behind the entire time, but he's going to be the first one on the board, and he's actually able to get some mileage out of it, getting the full oh. float string. Speaking of mileage, a quick 70 damage there. But now setting up all the resources once again. We got the Abraxas connecting, but no follow-up, barely whiffy. But the double leaf, another good chunk of chip. The parry though gets the opening but doesn't get the finish. Doesn't matter if it's on soul percent, but the tackle definitely takes it to three stocks apiece. Now we're having another totem opening. This could have led to a tech chase, but misses it. Douch is having it, it's funny for me to say, but last match on the order playing very passive, but I would say he lost due to some impatience towards the end. They're trying to be uh, throwing out the grabs and the attacks to finish off the stock early and here we have the Ezzy where you have to keep playing the patient play, reminding yourself 
you can't rush it. There is no need for you to shove for a certain thing. You have so many tools, just like the boomerang, to finish off the stock. So much conditioning and setting up to keep things safe. Scano even over tilting that leaf away. This is going to be frustrating as well for Liscano. Playing against Ooh. the Erda, which definitely most would consider a really bad matchup. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, and yeah, definitely so some pressure. frustration. He was so close to being able to pick up a 3-0 over Douchless, taking it in a matchup that he was predicted probably not to win as a seed and also just the general character matchup. But now, playing against the Ezzy, finds himself down two stocks, three to one, and potentially now going to have to make the run back. At the very least, he will get to pick the stages for the remainder of the game, or remainder of the set, but we'll see if that, that veteran presence here is just going to be able to up. take him forward. But what, what's some blocks by Dogeless? Just having the leaf out, waiting for the blocks, jabbing one side, the leaf hitting the other side of the totem. Now with the opening, puts him off stage, tries to push the totem, but knows there is no time. Sets up his resources, rather, for the next engagement, getting the ledge trap going. And you can see just how the playstyle difference compared to some other people. Some people may have chosen Ooh. to like float down and go for the downer there, really pressure this gunner, but instead, he goes immediately to pressure the totem, and he's not even necessarily throwing buttons into it. What he's been doing is he's been throwing the uh, boomerang in because it just hovers there over the inactive totem. It doesn't push it, but if he switches into it, it's forced damage. So it basically locks down the Scarno in the corner, and he is going to take it on Soul Find it. I'm so surprised. There was so much going on, and yeah, Dodge is actually making an account with the Ezzy, but the Abraxas connecting. Someone gets the opening, and Dodge is just ready ahead to make it count. Going in, no, no three zero here on the side of winners finals for or winners semi finals for both of them. Obviously, Pike Rider has come through with the uh, swift game, but we are going to be seeing a fight here from Dishless. Do we have to keep it going, or are we going to be seeing a three one as Liscano looks to make another upset? But now it very much looked like a decisive showing with the Ezzy. I wonder if Liscano has some answer to it. Maybe the stage did come into play, but it's hard for me to tell. Let's see if Liscano has something left out for the situation against the Ezzy, or if he will stick to the same old, same old. Consistent play by Liscano in the past week, so let's see if he can make it count. But we're still having the stage picks going on. I'm, I'm not gonna be surprised if Liscano just stays the same character. I wonder if he has any secondaries. Regardless, seeing Douchless on the Erda early on to try to warm it up, potentially for the upcoming matches. Especially against someone like, I, I believe, uh, the Ditto would be anticipated if G3 was to be his opponent. But right now, he needs to focus on the current match, current game, and be having a tiny stage counter pick with Shadow Briar. The map with the best music, if you ask me, Alexa, what's your take on the music? <laughs> I think the music's great. I just hate the walls on this stage. They're like some of the oh, yeah. hardest to wall jump off of, and especially Zoo, the way that oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Up, up special interacts with it. Like, there's, and that nothing makes me just like instant tilt <laughs> more than attempting to wall jump off of Shadow Bride. It's so deceptive like... because of all of the roots that are hanging out there, and you just think you are on the wall, but you're not quite on the wall yet. So you gotta oh, get that extra mile. As well as I love Shadow Bride, actually. Like the platform layout, great. <laughs> music, great. Ledges, I'd want to bin the whole stage. The ledges drive me mental, but I love this stage otherwise. So this should be favored for anything that doesn't require a lot of stage since it is a tiny one, but let us see what's gonna happen since I believe both of these characters might benefit from a bigger stage to set up more of the pressure as well as the totem or the resources with the Braxus or the Boomerang. Yeah, what's interesting as well, it's obviously a very different matchup playing like uh, Zhu Ang versus uh, Ezzy Ang, but I'd say that this was probably the stage that I personally found was easiest to play against Lee Scano. Just the way that the platform uh, lineups can give you your jumps back going to for some vertical strings really, really quick. It'll be interesting to see if Douchless is able to capitalize on that or whether he's kind of started to make the adjustments to this stage matchup. Oh, the totem did not get clipped by the boomerang again. So many times, a pixel away from hitting the totem to get the punish and the opening in the, into the reversal. Hitting the totem while it's charging attack after the transformation still gives you the opening and makes your opponent switch right back. But three or four times it happened before in the last couple games. It just couldn't make it count and it barely avoided it. And now we're seeing Liscano still being down regardless of having those missed opportunities here. What a good cross up with the downer. Just keeps it ambiguous on when he's gonna cross up your shield. And it will always be tough to shield this character with the multi hits, with the two sides at one attack, the charge attacks, and all the other mix ups. So strong on shield. 
He's going to try and make his way out of the corner. The getup attack is going to whiff, but he's not going to get put in that critical state. Dushless still playing from behind. But now we're seeing the opposite of what we saw from Lee Skarner before. Shades of Ariodi here, where he's getting all the multi-hits except the killing blow. So now the damage is going to expand. It is going to be Dushless to come to you with the first stock. Oh. The charge shot going to trade, but he is going to drop the stock. Just going to spend 14 points of damage in order to make it happen. Very much a worth trade. Finishing off the stock is really crucial because there's so much mileage that can still make someone can still make count on soul percent because it doesn't matter what percent you're on, it just matters if you get the opening or not. And multi hits being nerfed on soul percent in a way where they don't finish off the stock and don't matter. Once you're on soul percent, there's nothing to lose besides your stock. Oh, the book bringing the zoom and finishing off the stock on the perfect percentage, barely getting into orange and already a full stock down. Dodge has somehow made a massive comeback here. Massive stock to count, and now it doesn't look like it's even at all anymore, unless Liskana has something to say about it, getting some big openings right now. Not getting touched, still in blue. Right, Watching nice the burst, burst as well. Yeah. It was a quick burst here, just respecting the punish game there. The tackler as well, not being quite far enough. Set off the pressure, just keeps the totem safe, hitting it at the end of the attack there. The Uppy beating out the tackle there and forcing the burst right back. We still have three stocks to two though, so Dauchlice is still in the lead. And if he can get the openings, but no, a bit too impatient, sets up the projectile. Too close for comfort, gets jabbed and loses the stock. How did that just happen? A full stock in the lead, Liskano once again on the perfect percentage. Just Douch just making it count on those crucial moments. He gets the opening to bring it right to kill percent and gets the perfect spacing and the kill early on. And Liskano has to have the same pressure to bring it back because the punish game seems so one-sided with two openings of Douch just, just taking two of these stocks. He's been doing such a good job of floating at that, that single platform height, that lowest platform height. We've just been seeing Ezzy just threaten there, can go for the aerials, can then go up to the platform if need be with the extra rush granted uh, from the spark. Seems like Douche just really has a handle on this one, and whilst he definitely probably wanted to finish this out with the uh, Erda, showing exactly why he's a, such a difficult competitor to play against. The, the Ezzy just such a change of pace, and it seems like this guy is really having trouble adapting to it. The first oh, stop was yeah. close, but... On top else of that... Remember how we were thinking this stage might not be one side versus another? Or maybe even the counter pick for Lee Skarnon to make it count versus a more slow character? But this stage also allowed- Oh my goodness! Oh no! Was that a leaf kill off the side? Yeah, this yeah, stage very much it. allowed for three early stocks to be taken. This kill on the leaf on the side. I've never seen the leaf kill off the side. As well as those early kills off the top. And now we have a game 5 situation. All right, this is going to be our first one of the, uh, well, first one on stream of the night. Obviously, there was a game three over in Losers Round 1 that we unfortunately were not able to see. But at the very least, we're still getting the same number of games here in the winner's side of things. Winner of this is going to be going to play against Pycor in the winner's finals for a big chunk of the pot. And they're going to be dropping down into that Losers quarterfinal where Liddy Gid is waiting potentially either for an NZ Ditto or... Uh, you know, maybe I don't think the Erda will come out against her if uh, Dishless is dropping, but then also Afi and Galu. A difficult one, Lily. I know you're in chat. Let us know which one uh, which one of these two you're least looking forward to fighting. Yeah, I'm curious both. to hear it, but maybe don't spoil anything if you want to like keep it ambiguous. If you have some special plans, obviously you don't want to coach your opponent to take the win over yourself, especially on the high stakes as today with the price pool being six tuppled from 350 on the weekly to $2,000 today. And the share is gonna be spread out across top eight. So even the lower ranks get a bit more than what they usually get with the winner getting, I believe 35% of the pool versus 45. Still a decent chunk, especially with every match, every single set counting and potentially doubling the winning. So the match, it has been picked. We're going to Sovereign Peak and we're okay. staying with the Ezzy. Yeah, no surprise there that the Ezzy is going to be... I mean, it's 100% of the games won for Dushless have uh, been on the Ezzy. So no surprise that the Erda is not coming back out for this final game. So I heard the Erda was supposed to be a really strong pick in, in this matchup, but as we're seeing, Dalsha is struggling with it. Just the matchup experience it himself if it's correct that the matchup is in Erda's favor, but Douch is just the player experience, the head-to-head -head matchup experience, 
is in favor for the Ezzy right now with a comfort pick. We're seeing it once again on a game five situation here. Right. Both of them are going to be scrapping and trading for a little bit, but the first one into green looks like it might be Liscano. It is. You should just able to get the first stop, and we've lost the totem as well, so now I'm going to see that solo. Happy what a shield! He's kind of getting the shield, but only as one piece punish, and already forced to burst. Doesn't want to lose the stock too early once again. You don't want to lose the stock having the burst still on deck. Always want to have to utilize it, even if it's just aggressively as shield pressure to keep something safe, or to just burst a neutral, escaping another interaction. But as it stands, we're having Dalchdays on green. Very healthy stock lead there. Oh, what a drill into grab conversion, but misses the follow-up off of the totem swap there. This guy, okay, he's gonna force the burst out, isn't able to get the up there, but this is still such a strong position to be in. Doucheless, over on that left-hand side, does have four stocks still and a full bar of red, able to get some form of punish, not quite gonna push into the green, but this guy, <laughs> forced to give up that Led's possession in order to just get his uh, totem back. Liscano always the type of ang player to save the totem every single time. It looks like the totem's out of it, but every time some of these kind of finding a way to bring it back. Oh my goodness! And because of the totem swap, it it forced Douches to try to contest it, jumping off stage and putting him into the position where an SD could happen, and it did happen. Very yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, didn't have the burst. Here. It just shows how long this stock has been. It felt like he bursted like an entire minute ago, but he was still on the same stock, so he didn't have that extra Ooh. resource to get back. Maybe forgot about it and ever extended douche just once again. I'd say an early burst, but he's completely lost his lead here. But as you spoke of getting back, yeah, the lead is gone, and he's gone as well as having the HP lead and now the stock lead. He still has the burst on deck on his third stock of this game. Number yeah, there must five. have been a bunch of steam switches because it really did not feel like Liscano hit him all that much. But suddenly, Dushless just on the last legs of that stock. The oh. reflect there, but sends it back. <laughs> yeah, trying to throw the totem, he gets clipped by the Abraxas. I expected a second parry. Liscano is one of those players when it comes to the parry where usually he doesn't go for it, but when he goes, he just keeps on clutching out some crazy parries back to back. But it didn't matter in the end. There are a bit of chip in exchange of the book into the face for the stock. Now two stocks apiece. And the switch can just rolling across the stage, getting the opening, bringing him down to orange. Another big opening could take the stock here. But now Dutch is getting the reversal, though. Couldn't make it count. But once again, the reversal somehow from your combo. Now it's mine. Dutch is sending off the totem. But obviously, this counter is always going to swap back to save the totem. Right now, let's see if he's gonna make it happen. Yes, he goes for it, but Douch just one step ahead, just contesting with the totem. Before the totem's attack is out, you can definitely just attack it and get the opening because you force your opponent to switch back. They're still in time, still utilized, almost gets baited by the forward tilt, but rushes over it instead. Douch just got the opening. It's still dead even though Liscano still has a burst and the soul percent does matter. Stock taken first. Another opening, get some mileage. Elixir. This game seems very much high pressure. It doesn't seem like the camping is going on at all. We saw it early with the Erda. We saw it earlier as well on the other matches. But right now, they're just in each other's faces. Yeah, I mean, Dushless has done a great job of bringing this one back. Obviously, he was playing from the front before, but hasn't quite been able to do it. We're going to see the, the bite demon play. Through. We haven't seen it all said long. I, I forgot this existed, just seemingly not Ooh. needing it. That he had the read on the burst, it. but he just didn't have the execution. That's so unfortunate for Liscano. That could have been a massive upset there. The full charge on the up special as well. Yeah, this is game number five. This is the last stop for either side's winner's side. So let's see who can who can make it out on top and going to winner's final and forced to burst. This might have been already a zoom here. The demon point on the ledge would definitely take the stock there. It's the opening, text. but the plan. If the plan is parried and you send you send Azzy in it, she actually gets a bit of a weird angle. Oh! Gets the conversion, just the two piece with the book, just ready for it. The demon plan not coming into play too much to finish off the game, but the set being won by Dauch, let's bring it back. The Azzy comes out and set was decided. That was a really, really close game.